two team keep it clean what's up baby hope all y'all doing real good now of course we all listened to eric DaCosta, his press conference and i was very appreciative of both his and harbaugh's press conference one reason because the media they asked a lot of the questions that we had hoped that they would ask to both harbaugh and eric DaCosta. and one of those questions was about hollywood and the fifth year option uh, because I was wondering and hadn't heard anything about what the status of it was. I know the deadline to pick it up is, I want to say, May 10th, uh, but it's somewhere in the beginning of May. Um, but we just hadn't heard anything about it whatsoever. But Eric DaCosta did let us know that they do plan on picking up Hollywood Brown's fifth-year option. Now, the value of that fifth-year option is a little under $13 million. Um, so Eric DaCosta, he said that's, that's a bargain. He said it, that is a bargain. That's a steal uh, for being able to keep Hollywood Brown on the team uh, for another year. Now, one thing to keep in mind uh, is nothing's official until it's official. Now, I don't anticipate Eric DaCosta going back on his word, but at the same time, craziest stuff has happened. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind as we move forward. So until you actually see that notification, the Baltimore Ravens have picked up or the Baltimore Ravens have exercised Marquise Brown's fifth year option, then it, it hasn't happened yet. But we anticipate on getting that notification uh, in due time. But with Eric DeCosta, he when he talked about Marquise Brown, when he talked about Hollywood, um, something that I knew, but a lot of times I don't realize is that Hollywood Brown, and Eric DeCosta said it, he said he was, he was his first pick, his very first draft pick as Ravens general manager. I was like, oh, okay, so that, they, that has that sentimental value uh, with Eric DeCosta because you can only have one first overall pick, and it ended up being Marquise Brown. And he certainly had a huge impact on these Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Eric DeCosta talked about how he liked his, he loved his talent, his personality, loved his energy. And he said for his skill set and for what he brings to the table, that that fifth year option, he said it looks like a bargain. Um, and when we look at Hollywood's skill set, we know Hollywood is a, uh, a big play guy, a deep threat guy. He can do the underneath stuff as well. Um, now, he did, Eric DeCosta did mention that he feels like Hollywood has not played his best football yet. And I think we would all agree. And obviously, Hollywood, his, his biggest issue, the biggest thing with him, uh, has been the untimely drops. And of, of course, like there's no drop that I think really is timely, but it's been the untimely situational drops. Um, that has been the thing that has just held him back from really going to that next level. Because you see, he knows how to run the routes. You see, he is he was open a lot. Like he was open a whole lot. Um, and so you see, you see that potential there. And early on in the season, it was looking like that potential, even with the drops, a lot of that potential was getting unlocked. And like I always said it, ever since 2019, because that was Hollywood's rookie year, it's like you, you saw him throughout the regular season in 2019. He made some big plays, made some splash plays, and that was cool. But then in the playoffs, in that playoff game, that dude showed out. And that's what he's done in the playoffs. In the playoffs, he, he just turns into a different animal. And my goal, my, my hope for the Baltimore Ravens, and it's still my hope. And early on, it seemed like it was going that way. But, of course, things change. But my hope for the Baltimore Ravens is that in the regular season, they use Hollywood Brown like they use him in the playoffs. Because if they did that, that little thousand yards, that wouldn't be nothing. That wouldn't be nothing. And he was on a trajectory to easily pass getting a thousand yards. That yeah, that was nothing. But everything slowed down. Everything. And it's no it's, it's just no surprise that Hollywood's numbers took a big dip uh when Lamar Jackson went out. Because he was still getting his targets, probably not as much. Um, but he was still getting his targets from like a, a Tyler Huntley, but the connection, it just, it, it wasn't there like that. They don't see eye to eye like that. And that's not a shot at Tyler Huntley or Hollywood. Of course, they just weren't on the same page. And, and when you look at the way that Lamar Jackson and Hollywood Brown are on the same page, they like, 
in a whole nother book um, because they just they, they get each other. They know each other. Um, and, and again, Lamar now, even with that, even with that, Lamar Jackson, when targeting uh, Hollywood Brown, he wasn't perfect. He wasn't perfect. He had some times where he overthrew Hollywood, underthrew Hollywood. So did Tyler Huntley. Well, Tyler Huntley with Hollywood, it was usually an overthrow. Um, so there, there were times when Hollywood would be open. And the ball just, it, it wouldn't get to him. And that was with both quarterbacks. Then there were other times where Hollywood would be open and the ball would get to him right on the money. And he would drop it. Um, so we know, like, obviously, I think everybody would be, it would be a unanimous consensus. Everybody would agree that that one area where Hollywood can improve his game is just the drops. And he knows that. He acknowledged it already. Um, and we've all seen that. So it's it's not like, oh, man, breaking news. That's what Hollywood got to work. That's it. No, we all know that. Um, so if he can clean that up, ooh, boy. Even with him not even cleaning it up, ooh, boy. Because it's there. And you see that, like, that potential every year. You, you see it go up. You, you see the increase in production every year. If we look at his numbers, in 2019, he had 46 catches. Rookie year, remember, hurt all year, too. But 46 catches, 584 yards, uh, and he had seven touchdowns. So I was like, okay, okay, cool rookie season. And we know that that Miami game, boy, that, that thing was crazy, man. Um, but then the following year, he had 12 more catches. So he had 58 catches, 769 yards, uh, and eight touchdowns. So production went up. Production, it went up. And that's that's what he does, man. That's what he does. I think Hollywood, Hollywood just loved him some week ones. Because I remember 2019 week one, that was against Miami. Of course, he went off. He had two touchdowns. Then I believe in 2020 against the Browns. Didn't he have two touchdowns in that game? I think maybe he had one, but either way, I remember he um he had one hundred over hundred yards before halftime in that Browns game, and then week one against the Raiders, uh, I know he had a touchdown in that game where Lamar was juking and jiving, and then he caught Hollywood in the back of the end zone. Ooh, it's crazy because he's got Hollywood Brown. A lot of people talk about his stature, but it's crazy that him being what five 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 six. I don't even remember how tall he is. That he is a red zone threat. He is a red zone threat. Now, initially, if you don't watch Ravens games and you just look at, oh, man, Hollywood Brown, no, that little receiver, red zone threat, no, you're crazy. Nope. He is a red zone threat. With Lamar Jackson, even without Lamar Jackson, but with Lamar Jackson especially, him and that connection, man, that connection is something serious. But anyway, uh, back to the stats. So, again, last year in 2020, he caught 58 passes for 769 yards and eight touchdowns. And then in 2021, uh, he caught 91 passes for 1,008 yards uh, and six touchdowns. So, this is, with Hollywood, it, it reminds me, with his game, it reminds me a lot of Lamar Jackson's game. It, they, 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 it just is it's very similar. And the reason I say that is because... These two, they, they haven't played their best football. But despite them not playing their best football, they still make so much stuff happen. They still make a lot of stuff happen. They still put up numbers. Now, the numbers could be better, and they will be better, but they still puts in work. So I'm excited for the future. Um, I'm excited to see how Hollywood Brown continues to get better. Um, I'm just excited to see the Ravens, the, the way that they continue to use him. Because you know he's going to get his targets. <laughs> you, you know he's going to get his targets, man. Um, but I'm also excited just to see the wide receivers in general. Now, with Eric DaCosta in the press conference, he said, man, y'all y'all still, I just, I can't wait till we get to the point where y'all stop asking me about wide receivers. Y'all keep asking me about wide receivers. But when he said that, I was thinking, oh, oh yeah. They getting ready to sign another receiver. I really think that they are. And the reason I say that is because Eric DaCosta, he done done this before. He did it last year. Remember, he was insulted. He was insulted. And then he went out and drafted Rashad Bateman in the first round. Drafted Tyler Wallace in the, uh, the fourth round, I believe. And signed Sammy Watkins. So was he that insulted? Was he? <laughs> hey, man, it's, it's a game up there. You, you, you can't show all your cards 
when you get up there on the podium. Um, but we'll see uh, just how Eric DaCosta handles this whole thing, handles the wide receiver room. Um, and the thing, one thing that I, um, I'm appreciating a little bit more, they still got some work to do when it comes to the, their wide receivers. Um, but as far as with Hollywood, I feel like I don't feel like they've necessarily maximized his potential, but they really pushing it. They, they've pushed it more and more and more. Um, because one thing that I, I always feel bad for Ravens wide receivers is that with so many of them that have come through the building, they have never got to see their potential. Because it'll be one thing if it's like, all right, hey, this is what this receiver is really good at. This was this receiver is bad at. This is what this receiver needs to improve on. This is what this receiver needs to work on. This is what this receiver he does a really good job of. It'd be one thing if they got a lot more of that from their wide receivers. But a lot of times, we as fans, even we don't we don't know we don't get to see either how good or bad a player is because the Ravens just don't give those guys the opportunities. They don't give those guys the chances. And I'm not saying that every single wide receiver is going to get 1,000 yards or 1,000 catches. All I'm not saying that. But we, we, always, we continue to see so much untapped potential, and it, it leaves us wondering why. Like, man, how good could that guy have been? How bad was that guy? Because so, we'll, we'll always be thinking, oh, man, that receiver, man, he ain't work out. Oh, man, he was bad. Oh, man, that guy wasn't good. But did that guy even get a fair shot? Did that guy even get an opportunity? And it seems as if with Eric DaCosta, he's trying to sort of change uh, what Ozzie Newsom did. And again, it's not a shot at Ozzie Newsom. But Eric DaCosta seems to want to do things a bit differently, especially when it comes to the wide receivers. He looks like he would rather go a lot younger because Ozzie Newsom, the last couple of receivers he got, uh, he brought in Crabtree. Um, John Brown and Willie Sneed. And again, remember those were for Flacco. But then we saw with Willie Sneed, uh, he had that connection. That connection, it he had a connection with Flacco, but he also had a connection with Lamar. And Willie Sneed, he is from Florida too, from South Florida, by the way, from West Palm Beach. Shout out to the 561. But anyway, um, with, uh, with Crabtree, he was cool and he was down for Lamar, but the connection was, it, it was so-so. Um, but then with John Brown, mm -mm, he did not want to, uh, yeah, I don't even feel like getting into that story, that whole alligator arms and whatever. So they kept Willie Sneed, but they went young, drafted Hollywood, drafted uh, Miles Boykin. They went young. They brought in Seth Roberts. They, they went, they were very young at wide receiver, even with signing uh, two free agents, those being Willie Sneed and Seth Roberts. And then the following year in 2020, uh, it was Hollywood. It was, yeah, Willie Sneed, Miles Boykin. So, and then they drafted du Duvernay and Prochet. So they kept it pretty young again. They kept it young all over again. So then this year, uh, well, not this year, but last season, it was Hollywood. They drafted Rashad Bateman. They brought in Sammy Watkins, who it was so weird because initially I, I was thinking, oh, man, this guy's older. He's all beat up, banged up. But Sammy Watkins was like 27 or 28 at the beginning of the last season. I was like, oh, okay. Now, he was banged up because it was another season where he missed a, quite a few games and quite amount of time. And it seemed as if when he got healthy, he was never even really healthy. Um, it seemed like he just never got back to himself after he got knocked out, I think, in that Colts game. Um, but anyway... It seems as if Eric DaCosta is trying to go younger at wide receiver uh, as opposed to signing the, the older veterans. So we'll see how this thing goes. But so far, uh, Rashad Bateman and Hollywood Brown, in my opinion, they are great compliments to each other. And that's what I love. I love when the Ravens do it like that because I feel like it's just it, it's, it's great. Because my one of my favorite wide receiver combos and what I feel like has been the most successful for the Ravens uh, was Anquan Bolden and Torrey Smith. You got your one possession receiver that can make some stuff happen underneath. Don't sleep on them with the deep passes too now. But then you got your, your, your big play receiver, your deep threat, your speedster. So Anquan Bolden and Torrey Smith was a great match. And then you had Steve Smith Sr. Uh, and, and Torrey Smith. And that ended up being a great match. When Torrey Smith, when he had to be that guy, and it was, it was him and Jacoby Jones, that, that, that wasn't a good fit. But when you have receivers that really complement each other and they complement each other's skill sets, 
yeah, that's that's a good look, man. And that's exactly what I feel like Rashad Bateman and Hollywood Brown uh, both do. So looking forward to seeing these guys uh, in, in the future. Um, and, yeah, we're going to see how this thing goes, man. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I uh, appreciate y'all. And like Hollywood won't be since they supposed to pick up his fifth year option. I'm out.